Podcast and welcome to The Bible Speaks Live. Once again, coming to you with a word that we pray will encourage your heart tonight. We pray that all is well between you and the Lord as we come to you on this on this last week of the year. This last week of the year. Yes, we've come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord, trusting in His Holy Word, for He has never failed us yet. And now is not the time to turn around, because there are great, great things yet to come. We come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, as we always do, and we are streaming right now live on Facebook, YouTube, and also on Spreaker.com, that is our podcast uh, platform, S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R, and uh, we, we always come to you, we always come to you with a word that we know that the Lord has uh, placed into our hearts for this time. If you are, if you are uh, watching on YouTube, rather if you are watching on Facebook, why don't you just share this page uh, with someone, amen. Uh, also, we want to, uh, once again, shout out to those who do listen to us on uh, Spreaker.com, whether you're listening live or whether you're listening uh, wherever, however you are listening to us, uh, we want to thank you for your support, uh, your continued support, and listening to us wherever you are around this United States and around uh, this world. We thank you for listening in. We pray that uh, we may be continuing to come to you until uh, the Lord says... It's time to go. Amen. So we're going to come to you with the Word of God tonight. Uh, we're going to take you into uh, several books, but we're going to start in the book of uh, 1 John. The book of 1 John tonight. We're going to pray. And we're going to go right into our word for this evening. Amen. Lord, we bless your name. We thank you once again, Lord. You've allowed us to be in your presence. We pray for the next few minutes, Lord, that your power and your spirit, Lord Jesus, might go before us. Lord, speak to someone. Uh, hearing this word, wherever they are hearing it, however they are hearing it, Lord Jesus, whenever they are hearing it, Lord Jesus, cause this word, Lord Jesus, to be implanted within uh, their heart and their life, Lord Jesus. Lord, we rely upon you uh, all these times when we come together, Lord. So, Lord, have your way. We bless you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. First John. First John. And we'll be in chapter number two. First John chapter two. Listen, there are some things, some things that uh, that we need to be very, very sure of. There are many things that we need to be sure of, but one thing that we need to be sure of, and especially as we come into the end of one year, especially as we come into, especially as we come in, especially as we come into the end of one year. And the beginning of a new year, uh, it is very, very important uh, that we make sure that we know this particular fact. And we once again, we are in first, we are in first John chapter number two, and we're going to be reading from verse number three. Let's start reading. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He that says, I know him and keepeth not his commandments is a liar And the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth his word in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we know that we are in him. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also to walk even as he walked. Once again, may God bless the reading of his word. As I was saying, you know, there are many things, many things that we need to be sure of. As we go through this life and salvation, salvation is the most important thing that you need to be sure of. It is not something that you need to think so. Uh, You can't, uh, you can't hope so when it comes to salvation. I I think I'm saved. I I, I hope I'm saved. This is, you you need to have a no-so salvation. A no-so salvation. I, I know that I am saved. I I know that I'm born again. I know that I'm in Christ. I know that Christ is in me. We cannot, as in, in 
the world that we are living in today, we need to take we need to take uh, great pains to make sure that we are saved. Here's what it says in let's go real quick to Second uh, Peter, Second uh, Peter uh, chapter number uh, one and verse number ten. Second uh, Peter uh, chapter one and verse ten. Wherefore the rather brethren, he says, give diligence to make your calling and election sure give diligence you need to be diligent you need to be you need to make sure and confirm make every effort to confirm the fact that you are saved confirm it be sure about knowing it i am saved no you don't have to walk through this life wondering whether you're a christian you don't have to go through this life uh, trying to figure out whether or not you are in the faith or not. No, no. He says, he says, be very diligent and confirm that your calling and election is sure. That that that's what the Bible says uh, in Second Corinthians, Second uh, Corinthians, uh, chapter number thirteen. Second Corinthians uh, thirteen five makes a very similar statement, uh, and he he goes a little bit further uh, here in. Second Peter, he says to make sure, be diligent. And here in 2 Corinthians 13, 5, he says, examine yourselves. Examine yourselves whether ye be in the faith. Examine yourself. Make sure that you are in Christ. He says, examine yourself, test yourself. Make sure that you are in Christ. Once again, I repeat it again because, again, because it's worth uh, repeating. We cannot think that we are saved. We cannot hope that we are saved. We need to know that we are saved. It is a this is a no so faith. This is a no so salvation. I am saved. The song says, "Be very sure, be very sure that your anchor holds and grips the solid rock." Be very sure. Now, when we talk about this, when we talk about knowing whether we're saved, the Bible gives us that there are ways that we can know that we are in Christ. Here, here in back in First John, uh, chapter number two, in verse number three, he says, "Hereby, here is how we know. He says, here is how we know that we know Him. So, how do we know that we know Him? He says, number one, if you keep His commandments. If you keep his commandments, this is one of the ways you know that you know him. Doing what he says. Doing what he says. Now, now if you talk about that word knowing, talking about that word knowing, uh there are several different several different senses that this word know comes at us in scripture when we talk about the word uh know. Uh, know can mean simply to acknowledge, to acknowledge. Uh, John chapter 10 and verse 27 says, says that my sheep, uh, they, they, they hear my voice and, and the hearing of his voice mean it, it is understood that they know his voice and they follow that voice. It is a, an acknowledgement that he is the voice. He is the one. So, so there, that word know has a lot to do with acknowledging. And the second way the second way that we uh, that this word no comes at us in scripture, uh, we read in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter number fifty three, Isaiah chapter number fifty three, and verse number eleven, Isaiah fifty three and eleven. It says, "He shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied." Here it comes by his knowledge. Shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. By his knowledge, in other words, by knowing him, by knowing him. And that means believing, because he says here, he says, by his knowledge, by knowing him, shall my righteous servant, that's Jesus, he will justify many. Jesus justifies those who believe in him. He justifies 
those who believe in him. So this word know has to do with believing, believing, acknowledging and believing. The third way that this word know comes at us in scripture, uh, you can go to uh, 2 Corinthians, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and uh, verse number 21. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse number 21. It says, for he hath made him to be sin for us. And it's talking about Jesus here. It says, who knew no sin that he might, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. It says that Jesus knew no sin. In other words, Jesus did not experience sin for himself because he did not commit any sin. So this word no has to do with experience, experience. And it's very important that we understand. It's very important that we understand that fact that this verse brings out that Jesus knew no sin. He did not experience it, but the Bible says he became sin for us. He became sin for us. Finally, uh, the last way that this word no comes to us in scripture, uh, you'll find in the book of Job. The book of Job, uh, chapter number 22. Job chapter number 22 and verse uh, number 21. Job 22 verse 21. It says now, it says, Equate, acquaint now thyself with him and be at peace. Thereby good shall come unto thee. That's a hidden scripture. That's not a scripture that everybody knows. It says, acquaint thyself with him. Know him. Get to know who he is. Fellowship with him. And so the idea behind that word acquaint which is no the idea behind that word is to commune to commune so there are several ways that this word no comes to us in scripture we need to commune uh, with him now when we come to know him this and back in first john now first john chapter number two and verse number three hereby know that we know him he's speaking there about how we get to know who jesus how, how we get to know who he is he's talking about the when we first come into him this is how we know that we are saved because there's listen there's several things that happen when you get saved when you get saved as soon as you as you get saved knowing jesus is going to be accompanied by a desire a desire to obey him a desire to please him and a desire to grow in him. In other words, to learn more about him. And once again, if these things, if these things have never taken place in your life, then we need to head back toward the altar. If you do not, do not have a desire to obey him, if you do not have a desire to please him rather than please yourself, if you, if you do not have a desire to grow whatsoever, then we need to take that walk. We need to we need we need to we need to find out. We need to examine ourselves to see whether or not we are in the faith, whether or not we are saved and and born again. Let's look at Jesus' own definition. Jesus' own definition of what salvation is in John chapter seventeen. John chapter seventeen, and this is what we call the the high priestly prayer. Of Jesus, John chapter 17 and verse number 3, he says, And this is eternal life, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. So what is salvation? Salvation is, according to Jesus, knowing God. Knowing God. Knowing him. This is the meaning of salvation from the lips of Christ himself, knowing him. Now, you can know that, please understand, please understand that there is, that there is a difference between knowing about Jesus and knowing Jesus. There is a vast difference. There is a, there is a major difference between the two. Because just because, just because you know about Jesus does not mean that you know uh, 
who Jesus is. Okay? Uh, we, we must make sure, once again, make our calling and election sure. You have so many people that are into uh, that are into different celebrities and, and and they and celebrities have still have fan clubs. And back in the day they had magazines that were dedicated uh, to different celebrities. Now I guess you have places you, you have TMZ with the gossip and you have all these other different gossip plays that you have entertainment tonight that comes on TV and all the all these different uh, shows and magazines. You have People Magazine and Us Magazine. All of these things are 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 dedicated to the, the uh, celebrities, and people think that they that they know these people. They interview them and and find out. Well, they're just like me. They're just like me. And and some people, there are groupies that that know these people so much that they know what they like, what they don't like, what they eat, what they don't eat, what they wear, what they don't wear, what their favorite color is. What they there there are people like that. And they think they know them, but you don't know them. You've never spent time with them. And so it is a mistake to believe that you know someone just because you know a lot, maybe, about them. And that's how it is with Jesus. We cannot suppose that we know him just because we know so much about him. This thing called salvation is an inside work. It is an inside work. It is not external. It's, it, it doesn't matter how much you know. When we come into salvation, we know nothing. We know nothing at all when we come into salvation. If you think you know about Jesus when you come into Jesus, maybe you grew up in church, maybe you heard everything and you understand it, at least you think so in your mind, and then now you come into Christ, you have to start from scratch because you still, you, you, you don't know anything. You must learn of him. The Bible says, learn of me because my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So, listen, we need to make sure that we don't make the grave mistake of thinking that because we know about him, that we know him. We must not think that just because we walk inside of a church that makes us a Christian. That does not make us a Christian any more than walking into a garage makes you a car or walking into a barn makes you a chicken. You, you must make sure that you know him, that you know him. Now, he wants us, the Lord wants us to, let me use the words, go deeper. He wants us to go deeper. This is why, this is where you get uh, verses like uh, Philippians, uh, the book of Philippians chapter number three, Philippians chapter three and verse number 10, a very well-known uh, scripture. Uh, Philippians chapter 3 and verse number 10. It says, that I may know him. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. Now this the know the knowing that he is talking about here he is talking about that last that last way that we spoke about the, these different senses of the word know in the bible that fourth one that job was talking about communion fellowship getting to know him getting in touch with him who he is that's what he's talking about here in philippians chapter 3 and verse number 10 that we may know him not surface not externally not just knowing about him and the facts about his life no, 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 no. He, he says that I may know him. Know him. Be, be, be absolutely, completely immersed and acquainted with him. He says, he says, and the, the, the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings. I, when he suffers, I suffer. It, 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 this is something, remember that the Bible says that we are in Christ and Christ is in us. When the Bible says that when he died, we died. And when he rose again, we rose again. We must never forget that. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. So this thing that we call salvation is a is a no-so salvation. A no-so salvation. I know that I'm saved. I know that I'm born again. I know 
that he's coming back again for me. I know it. And if you have any doubts as we head into a new year, if you have any doubts whether or not you are in the faith, you need to make sure that you are in the faith. You need to do it. You need to not wait. There is, The Bible says that now is the accepted time. Now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. Listen, there are some people that have heard these words so many times. So many times, it's like water out of a faucet. They can repeat them. They can talk about them. And they probably can preach about them, even though they're not saved. They can probably preach about them themselves. You need to have this in you. In you. If it's not in you, then it's not going to work. It's not going to work. You know, sometimes we take sometimes we take a lot of heat. Sometimes we take a lot of heat. And sometimes we take a lot of shade uh, for some of the things that we say. Some of the things that, that, that we believe. Some of the things that we that we hold on to. Listen. Listen, this whole no so. This whole no so salvation. Listen, the Bible says that we are not to be conformed to this world. Do not be conformed to this world. Do not allow the world to, to mold you into its shape and form. No. No. The Bible says that we are to be renewed in the spirit. Be renewed in the spirit of our mind. Listen, we cannot allow the world to dictate how we think. We cannot allow the world to dictate how we go about doing things. We need to make sure that we hold on to Christ. This is part of what it means. This is part of what it means when it says that we ought to, uh, in, in back in 1 John, where it says that we hear is how we know him by keeping his commandments. Now, keep means to, in one sense, obey. But keep, but keep in another sense, to keep means to watch. To watch over, to guard. We ought to guard this word. We ought to guard our salvation. We ought to, we ought to make sure that we do not allow anything that is not of Christ to come in. Now, none of us, let, let's be clear about this, not one of us, including myself, not one of us, goes about this and does this in perfection. The world is a mighty place. The world is full of all sorts of things and we get stained. We easily, we, we become easily corrupted by the things that are around us. They get in us, they stick to us like Velcro, Velcro but we must not allow these things to stick on us. When Jesus came in, when Jesus came in uh, to a house, and when Jesus came, it was the night of his last supper, and he walked into that house, and he sat down, and they began to wash his feet. Jesus began to wash their feet. And Peter said that he would not allow Jesus to wash his feet. And Jesus, and Peter, and Jesus said, listen, if I don't wash your feet, you can have no part of me. And then Peter said, Jesus, don't just wash my feet. Wash all of me. Listen, we get stained. We get corrupted. There's dirt that is, spiritually speaking, on our feet as we go through this world daily. Things that come into our eyes, eye gate. Things that come into our ear gate. Things that just stick to us. And we need to be washed. We need, for, we need a cleansing. We need a daily cleansing to get the corruption off of us. We have to allow the Lord to do what only he can do. At the same time, we just cannot allow anything and everything in to us. It won't work. It won't work. And so, as I was saying, we, 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 we take a little bit of heat for some of the stances that we take. We take a little bit of heat for some of the things that we uh, that we believe and that we try and live by. We, 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 we take some heat sometimes, but listen, listen, <laughs> if you think that after Jesus spoke on any given occasion, that they stood up and gave him standing ovations, if they stood up and, and shouted, yes, yes, oh, he had, he had his season of he had a season of, of acceptance. 
there was a there was a small space of time in Jesus' ministry where he was accepted uh, in, in favor with God and man. But as the more he spoke, the more he put his finger on people's lives, uh, the more that he called people out, and the more that he spoke about sin and sinfulness and the need to be righteous, the more he spoke about it, the more he sort of alienated many people. And people didn't want to hear about that. People didn't want to hear the truth. And Jesus said, as he was in this world, so shall we be. Be careful when people pat you on the back and say, good job. Be careful when people pat you on the back and say, that was a good message. No, it, it, it may have been, but you let the Lord be the one to tell you it was a good message. You let the Lord be the one. Listen, be very careful. Nothing has changed. If you speak this word properly, if you speak this word as Jesus spoke this word, if you speak about sin, if you call out sin every now and again, uh, if you make salvation uh, a top priority uh, in your ministry, you are going to have some flack. You're going to have some pushback. You're going to have some people that are not going to uh, uh, want to hear what you have to say. They're going to wonder how come you're not on the everybody else's bandwagon. And do what everybody else does. And say what everybody else says. They're gonna, they, people are going to wonder. You're not going to get invitations to speak at uh, at other churches. You, you, people are not going to invite you places because you're not really you're not really talking things that are going to uh, uh, make my people feel good. People have itching ears. People want to hear. People want to be told that everything is all right. People just want to shout. People want to dance. People want to just. That, that, that's that's fine. Truth can make you shout and dance too. Truth. Victory over sin can make you shout and dance too. Yes, knowing that the victory, our victory is at the cross can make you shout. and can, it, it can make you dance. But once again, this is not what people want to hear. People want to get rich. And people want to do so many other things. People are not interested in in in. Many of the things, many of the things, not all the things, but people are not interested in many of the things uh, that the Bible has to say. But we must make sure, we must make very sure that we stay on point and speak the truth that God has given to us. And the day when the message that you speak becomes your message and not his message is the day to step down. Step down. It can't be what you think. It can't, it can't be your message. It's, it's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. So, where is your salvation? Are you saved? As you're listening right now, are you saved? Do you know that you're saved? You know, the those who are Catholic, those who are Catholic, uh, they do say that, you know, you, you, you may not know whether you are saved or not. They don't preach a salvation that the Bible uh, preaches, but that's why when you die, uh, they say these words over you and, and you, you, you either go to heaven, you either go to hell, or you go to purgatory, according to Catholicism. Even though the Bible does not speak of any sort of place called a purgatory, they say this is where you go if you wasn't that bad, but you wasn't that good, so you get stuck in the middle there, and they can pray you in, they can pray you out. Listen, that that that's... That's all fables from, from Catholicism. But you even have Jehovah's Witnesses who are not sure of their faith. And Jehovah's Witnesses, not for one minute, do not think that Jehovah's Witnesses are Christian at all because it's not Christianity. Jehovah's Witnesses is not Christianity. Uh, they do not believe in the same Jesus that, that we preach. So they are not speaking of a Christianity that uh, the Bible speaks of. And they're not sure whether they are going to make it into the kingdom or not. Uh, they're not sure. This is why they do what they do. This is why they stand out and go door to door proselyt uh, 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 proselytizing and, and trying to make converts. This is why they do it, because they're not sure. They're not sure. They don't know if they're going to be there at the end or not. My Bible tells me, my Bible tells me that I am saved right now. It is a present, my salvation is a present reality. Has nothing to do with pride or boasting. 
I am saved now. It is a present reality, but at the same time, salvation is a future. It's a future hope. I am saved, and I will be saved. The Bible says, he who endures to the end shall be saved. So there's no contradiction of terms. He who endures to the end shall be saved, but we are saved. He says right here, 1 John chapter 2, verse 3, here's how you know that you are in him. This is how you know it, if you keep his commandments. Now let's go back here uh, to to Second John before we before we close out tonight. I just want to make a few points. Uh, he says in verse number four, he that says he that says I know him and keep not his commandments, he call he point blank. That's a lie right there. He says you're lying if you say that you are in him, if you say you know him, but your but you do not make it a point. To keep his commandments. Remember what we said. A new, the new life in Christ. Knowing Jesus is marked by. A desire to obey him. To please him. And to grow in him. And if you do not have a desire. To obey his commandments. He says you're lying. That's what he says. He says he is a liar. And the truth. Is not in you. That That is so direct. There is, there is no more direct way you can say it, what he's saying there. He says here that if your life is not marked with a desire to keep his commandments, in other words, to, to obey, to please, and to grow in Christ, if that's not your life and you say you know him, he said you don't know him. He says you're not saved. That's what the Apostle John says. He says what, in verse number five, but, Whoso, and, and we're going to see in these next two verses here, that knowing him is comprised of three different things. It says, but whoso keepeth, keepeth his word, keepeth his word. Knowing him has to do with keeping his word. Once again, doing what he says. In him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby, or this is how we know that we are in him. Notice. In him, we are in Christ when we are saved. Verse number five, verse number six rather says, he that said he abideth in him, to abide is to, is to stay. To abide is to be planted in. He that abideth in him, so once again, this thing of knowing him has to do with staying in him, living in him. Jesus says, abide in me and I in you. Abide, make our abode. He's our house, and he makes us his house spiritually. He's in us. So he that abide, he that said he abides in him, ought also, ought himself also to walk, even as he walked. That's the third word that this whole thing of knowing him is built around. Keeping his commandments, abiding in him, and walking as Jesus walked. Walking as Jesus walked. You've heard the phrase over the years you may have, WWJD. What would Jesus do? What would Jesus do? What would Jesus say on in any given situation? None of us have passed this test perfectly in our life. Doing what Jesus would do in a given situation. We go off into the flesh many times. We go off into ourselves. We allow the enemy to use us. So many different things. So many different dynamics happen when we find ourselves in different situations. And many times we don't find ourselves doing what Jesus would do. Or saying what Jesus would say. But thank God once again for Jesus that he is there. To watch, to cleanse, to guide us. Even when we do wrong, even when we don't say the right thing or do the right thing. He's there and he will forgive if we would just ask. He cleanses us. He cleanses us. So we need to walk as Jesus walked. We need to walk as he did. Do what he did. Say what he would say. I know. I know it's a tall order. 
it's a tall order. But being in Christ, the fact that we have, that everything has been given to us by his divine power, everything that pertains unto life and godliness, we have. We do have it in us to do what Jesus would do. We do have it in us to say what Jesus would say. We do have it in us to walk as he walked. We do have it within us. It's through his divine power that he's placed in us. Yes, we can do it. We'll never be perfect, but we do not have to allow sin, as the Bible says, we do not have to allow sin to have dominion over us. Never. Never. So do you have a no-so salvation? Do you have a no-so salvation? I don't think so. I hope so. You need to know so. Knowing Christ. There's no better time to know him. Going out of the old. Coming into the new. Making sure you step into the new. In Christ. Step into the new year. New in Christ. The Bible says, any, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature, a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. You can be brand new. You can be brand new. You can know. You can know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you are in him. You can know it. You don't have to worry. You don't have to have anywhere. You can lay your head down on your bed at night knowing that if anything should happen, you're in him and you'll be with him. You'll be with him. No so salvation. I know I'm saved. I know I'm saved. To be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. Amen and amen. Lord, we bless you tonight. We thank you. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your people. And Lord, we thank you that, Lord, we know the, uh, that we are in you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we know that many don't know who you are. And Lord, I pray that this word, uh, this word that has gone out on tonight, Lord Jesus, may touch someone somewhere at some time, at some point in their life. Someone may turn this on. Someone may touch a button. Lord, Some somebody might log on and hear this word. I pray that, Lord, you might draw them to yourself, Lord Jesus. Cause salvation to flow in their direction as you convict them of their sin by the Holy Spirit. Lord, have your way. Lord, we need to know you. And we need to know that we know you, Lord Jesus. We thank you. We thank you for everything you have done for us. We bless you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. We bless the Lord. We thank God for what he has done, for what he is doing. Uh, we, thank, we thank God that he has once again uh, given us this particular platform to be able to speak his word. Uh, we know that it's all of God, and we know, that in, we know that in his time, in his time, in his perfect time, he will bring all things uh, to pass, and so we want to allow the Lord uh, to have His way. Once again, you can you can find all of these podcasts. You can find them on Spreaker dot com. That's S P R E A K E R. You can also go to iTunes, TuneIn Radio, and iHeart Radio. Uh, you can go to those uh, platforms, and you will also find all of these podcasts on Spreaker. We do have seven other podcasts that we produce uh, that will be we believe will be of benefit to your spiritual life. Uh, whether you ne just need a little quick devotion, uh, whether you need uh, Bible study, whether you need to hear uh, a word from the Lord in a sermon, uh, we have all of that uh, at Spreaker.com. Also, a little bit of that, you will find it on YouTube. Uh, so, once again, avail yourself to those things that the Lord is providing. Let the Lord have His way in your life as you put Him and the cross in the center of of your life. Let the Lord have his way. So we want to thank you once again. We want to thank you for joining us on tonight. And don't forget tomorrow night we'll be right back here uh, with the Wednesday night Cutting It Right uh, Bible study. Myself and my wife will be here, Lord willing, uh, with another uh, Bible study that we pray will help you to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Until that time, I'm Pastor Michael Jakes and we'll see you next time. May God bless you. Happy New year.